So, welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. Today we're going to have a look at um, enabling PDM to work on a ET200 ISP on PCS7 version 9. Um, but uh, the functionality is also supported by TIA Portal with the same I.O. So the ET200 ISP is remote I IO for hazardous areas so it normally comes in a, a stainless steel enclosure that's pre-approved with your IO cards in there and the milliamp input cards are heart uh, enabled or support heart pass-through as standard so we're just going to have a look in this project and we're going to add a um, a Siemens Coriolis meter, an FC430 to the project and then we're going to have a look at that with, with PDM. So here's my project. I'm connected to our demo room remotely and if I open the hardware screen I can see my network here. So as it stands at the moment the um, ET200 ISP is sat on my Profibus DP network you'll have a RS-485 intrinsically safe converter that will be sat in a safe area and that will convert Profibus DP into something that's suitable for zone 2 that you can then take into the ET200 ISP intrinsically safe cabinet. The milliamp inputs, outputs and digital inputs and outputs uh, are then all uh, uh, protected via barriers for zone zero installation. So here's my ET200 ISP and when you open this up you'll see all of your different heart digital input cards. So on my first slot I have uh, an F which is a safety module so the, uh, the really nice thing about Siemens IO is you can mix safety IO with standard IO on the same rack. Then I have some uh, digital input and digital outputs and then I come down to um, a standard uh, two wire heart input card and you do have to be careful here you have to, you, you have, to have a two wire option or a four wire option um, and you can't mix and match within the same IO card we also need to make sure that we've got the ES9 option at the end here to support um, fast art. So let me just have a look if we go to object properties and then parameters. Some of the things that we have to do to enable fast heart and then for each channel if you have a heart device connected to it we need to enable it for heart. So it'll be, it'll be by default either on deactivated or two wire but we need to select heart. Okay, You'll still get the analog signal but enabling a heart will allow PDM to, to pass through this card down to the instrument. Now I don't need to do anything else um, for that. I don't need to map any heart variables. I can. Um, we'll look at some of those. But here I can still enable um, heart diagnostics or standard analog diagnostics for, for that input. Okay. So unfortunately, unless you've got configuration in and run, setting that to heart, you would have to do a, a compile and a stop of the automation station or the PLC to, to get that function set up. So really it's something that you should enable as standard. It doesn't do any harm and then when we come to do PDM we don't have to do any compile or downloads like you'll see now. So I already have a device on input 1 and now I'm going to add my Coriolis meter to input 2 so I right click and then insert new object. This is going to look in my library for this device and it will give me the options that I can import for that device. So here I have a heart field device. Now it doesn't know what the heart field device is but really at the point of setting your station up 
that's what I would like to see. Now this text here um, is purely text. It is not the symbol that PCS7 uses. So if I right click and do edit symbols, so that it wants to save the changes because I've just added this new heart interface. You'll see on under here um, I already have my Coriolis uh, mapped to the actual memory locations uh, assigned on the card. So this is purely text. So I can change this. I can rename it. Or you would put your site tag in here. So if I double click this now, it will try and open up PDM, but it still doesn't know what the device is. So it's the card is not a heart multiplexer. All of the devices connected to it need to have the default heart address set, so zero, and that's what it, they'll be set to because they're not set to multi-drop as standard from the factory. That's from any manufacturer. If you change the heart address to anything else, it won't communicate with this card. So all we need to do is click on device in identification. Revision 4, so it's found the, the correct revision. And the first thing we should always do to finish off is do an upload. I have the change log set. So I can see down here in the bottom right that I have a connection. And now it's going to start uploading those parameters from the device. So there we have the parameters up, uploaded. So the next thing you might want to do, um, if you had a handheld heart communicator, you might not be interested in, in programming this device. You just need to make sure it's wired up right and it's going to the right memory location on, on your DCS or your SCADA. So we have loop test. Once I've done that, if I want to do a simulation, so it's a, it's a little bit more than a loop test because it, it requires us simulating a flow value, I need to set the flow meter up. And to do that, we will use Quick Start Wizard. I've already done a read, but there is a read option, so we can just go through this. So we have tags, we can select the installation date as today, and then some instructions for how you install it wire it if it's a remote and then what we have here are, are our process values so the, fir the first process value here so this is your, your heart memory map but the first one is is also your milliamp output uh, on on milliamp output one this next screen looks a bit busy because for it is a multivariable flow meter um, but what we have here what we need to be concerned about is the low flow cutoff. These are just software alarms for for each of the the measurements, which we're we're not really con concerned about. And then we have forward or negative flow if somebody's put the flow meter in the wrong way round, and pulsation settings. So normally, if you don't know, leave it on three, the middle one, um, depending on the application. If you're doing high speed uh, batching, then it might need to go on option. A uh, faster option. So next, um, volume flow. You can see there it's got an issue. So we just have a look at this. So loop four to twenty, um, and we can do multi-drop mode if we want. If, um, then under here, positive or negative flow, and then we have bidirectional, and then we have this uh, symmetric one where it does positive and negative flow over the full scale. So zero flow will be 12 milliamps for instance so we'll just set that for positive and then you have to set the flow rate so if you right click the box you can see the options so we're going to put in here 890 uh, low flow value time constant and then your fail safe settings so there's my milliamp range 
I get old and new and then I just click on apply and transfer so that's going to apply the parameters to this table so you can see here there's someone one that's changed gone to a pencil but then it's going to download it to the device so it's recommending here to do a zero um, use this with extreme caution but there is another wizard for, for, for doing a, a zero point calibration you've got to be 100% sure that um, your pipe is full with liquid or air depending on if it's gas or uh, uh, liquid application and definitely for liquid that you've trapped the operating pressure in there or, or at least um, a back pressure of 200 millibar and that's pretty consistent for Coriolis meters if you're going to do a zero if you don't meet those conditions and you zero the flow meter then you're going to have issues so to simulate we go to device simulation and process values and for this particular one our main process value on, on milliamps is volume flow we'll set that to 300 and we'll transfer that to the instrument and we can see there the simulation but what that should have done as well is done a full simulation so um, if I have any pulsed output set for totalizing or anything those will those will start counting up so we can we can check that by clicking the process values and I can see here volume flow is 300 and my current output is nine nine milliamps so it does a a full simulation of what would actually happen with the, the screen so the screen will change value the only thing that you'll have that you need to be wary of is you'll have a different symbol so if I just close this you can see here that the hand symbol is stating that the unit is in simulation and this particular flow meter will stay in simulation until you tell it to stop simulating or you recycle the power and that's for any of the process values so if you want to do a long-term simulation for your loop test then this is ideal so I'm going to close that save that the last view I wanted to show you is within PDM uh, we have this uh, device plant view and what's nice about this if you have a lot of ET200 ISP or or any heart remote IO on, on site um, it may be tricky to know exactly where each particular instrument is wired um, when you come to, to use PDM what this view does it just lists all the device via tag so I can see alphabetically where where my devices are I can also if I click on this this is showing you the 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 IO but I'm only interested in instruments so if you go view display devices only I can see those are all there and then I can go through and start working on each one of these so I might want to um, update my diagnostics on that one You can see the actions in this operation area and as they go through and they're completed you'll get a, a summary of, of what was successful so you can see I've used it in the past and any errors that you had or warnings um, when you uh, did your update okay once you've got your plant up and running that's a really nice view for an instrumentation engineer so there we have it this is a, that's how you you bring um, heart PDM functionality into um, ET200 ISP IO uh, thanks for listening and I hope you found it useful